Question number one on this year's final exam comes from section P.4. It was previously tested on our first exam. It was question number 12. And it has to do with being able to write the equation of a line uh, in slope-intercept form from a variety of different starting information. First problem, writing the equation of the line in slope-intercept form that satisfies the given conditions that it passes through these two points. The first thing that we need to do is that we need to find the slope. So we have to know that to find the slope, we do the change in the y values, which could be calculated 2 minus negative 4, divided by the change in the x's, which would be 5 minus 2. So again, I did y minus y, divided by x minus x. So that becomes 6 divided by 3, so the slope is 2. Okay, not the final answer, but needed to find the equation of the line, we're going to use point slope, point slope is one of those formulas that you definitely want to know. Um, that you want to have on your note card if you need. Point slope is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, so we have the slope. Found the slope here. We pick any one of these points to be the x1, y1. So let's say this is the x1, y1 point. So it substitutes in y minus 2 equals 2 times x minus 5. We will distribute the 2 and get y minus 2 equals 2x minus 10 and we add the 2 and we get y equals 2x minus 8. This next question has the same directions, just different starting information. Uh, we want to be parallel to this line and pass through this point. So the first thing you do is to again find the slope. And to find the slope of our line, we need to use this line. Okay, so let's bring that line down. 2x minus 3y equals 10. We're going to solve this line for the y which will allow us to see what the slope is. So negative 3y equals negative 2x plus 10 divided by negative 3. We get positive 2 thirds x minus 10 thirds. This is the number that we want. That's our slope. Okay. Now we want to be parallel to this line so we're going to use that exact same slope. Now we use point slope here our point is right here x1 y1 so we have y minus 2 equals 2 thirds that's our slope x minus negative 6 distribute the 2 thirds get y minus 2 equals 2 thirds x plus, uh, that will be 4, we add 2 to both sides, get y equals 2 thirds x plus 6. Last problem is the same directions, we again begin by finding the slope. Find the slope using this line. We're going to solve that line for y. 4y minus x equals 3 is the same as 4y equals x plus 3, which is the same as y equals 1 fourth x plus 3 fourths. So this number is our slope we want perpendicular slope. So we're going to use negative 4 over 1 or negative 4. 
Okay, so we're going to use that negative 4 slope and point slope, y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, so y minus negative 8 equals negative 4 x minus 2. Get y plus 8 equals, we distribute, negative 4x plus 8. So y equals negative 4x, uh, and that's all. Question number two on the final exam comes out of section 3.4 and has not been tested yet. In this section, uh, and in this question in particular, we're going to go over how to expand expressions of a single logarithm into multiple logarithms using our properties of logarithms. Directions say use properties of logarithms to expand the single logarithm into multiple logarithms. So, everywhere that I see these logarithms, or this expression connected with multiplication, that's where we're going to begin expanding. This is the same as natural log of 3 plus natural log of x to the fourth plus natural log of y cubed. And then all the exponents that we see, we can drop down to the front of their respective logarithms. So our final answer is natural log of 3 plus 4 natural log of x plus 3 natural log of y. Second question here has the same directions. Uh, so we're expanding this log expression into a multiple logarithms. Here we see a division. This is the division that tells us how to separate this. Uh, we're going to have log y to the fifth minus log x plus 3 squared. Again, any exponent moves to the front of its respective logarithm. So we end up with 5 log of y minus 2 log x plus 3. Please do not think that you can split up a log of a sum. Uh, this x plus 3, this log of x plus 3 cannot be uh, split up into multiple logs itself. Only splitting up products and quotients is all we're able to do. One final example of this type of problem. Here you see a product between x squared and the square root 3x plus 2. So we get log x squared plus where the product is. Uh, so that's a log base 4. Log base 4 of, now the square root 3x plus 2, I'm going to write as 3x plus 2 quantity to the half power. I like seeing powers even the radicals, because it's those powers that we pull out to the front of their respective logarithms. So this is 2 log base 4 of x plus half log base 4 of 3x plus 2. And finished. Third question on the final exam was taught in section 1.6, was previously tested on exam 2, question number 23. Uh, in this question, you're going to have to have an understanding of basic transformations on functions, uh, being able to describe transformations on functions as it relates to horizontal or vertical translations, um, horizontal or vertical stretching or shrinking, and reflections all included. Okay, this first problem says that f of x is a basic function. Describe in words the transformation of f of x to g of x. So our basic function is x squared. Our new function is 2x squared minus 4. So we have to be able to describe then in words what the 2 and the minus 4 does to this function as far as transformations. So the first thing I'm going to do is the 2 because I'm going to multiply before I subtract and the 2 is going to vertically stretch by a factor of 2. 
Second thing I would do is in that minus four, and that minus four is going to shift all points down four units. Okay, so there's our transformation on that first one. The second one, again, we have f of x is the basic function, square root of x, and the g of x, uh, there's actually a typo in g of x, I apologize, that should be square root of x plus 5 minus 2. Okay. So what is the transformation? The first thing that we're going to do is the plus 5. The plus 5 is going to shift, shift points left five units, and then the minus two is going to shift the points down two units. So the plus five minus two is shifting all points left five down two and then replotting from there. Last one, the f of x, the basic function is x cubed, and then the transform function has this minus four here and then the negative in front. So what do those two things do to our basic function? Uh, the first thing is the minus four on the inside is going to shift points to the right four units. The negative in front is going to reflect over uh, the x-axis reflect or you could say flip uh, flip over the x-axis would be fine too. Next question comes um, from section P.6. It was previously tested on exam 1 number 2a. Student will be able to perform operations with complex numbers. Okay, the problem that you might see on the test uh, is going to be a product. The only question is, how is the product going to be presented? Uh, in this first example, you have two binomials. When you see two binomials, this is a straight foil type problem. So we're going to do first 12 outside, which is 8i. Inside is negative 21i and then the last is negative 14i squared. If we get these like terms, we get 12. Um, that's gonna be minus 13i minus 14i squared. Now for these complex numbers, we all have to remember that i squared is equal to negative one. So we replace this i squared with a negative one. So it becomes 12 minus 13i plus 14. And now the 12 and the 14 are like terms. We end up with 26 minus 13i. All right, the other way that the product might be presented might be like this as a binomial squared. So we're testing two things. One, can you work out the comp the, the operation with complex numbers, but the second thing is do you know what this square means on the binomial? It means that we're going to take that binomial, 3 minus 5i, multiplied by itself. So we're going to FOIL now from here. So I'm going to go through all these steps. We get 9 minus 15i minus another 15i plus 25i squared, like terms. So we have nine minus 30i minus 25. More like terms, make negative 16 minus 30i. The next question on the final exam, number five is Section 3.1, also not previously taught yet or tested yet as we haven't covered Section 3.1 on a test. Um, students will be able to evaluate expressions involving E. All right, if ever there was a gimme on this year's final exam, this is probably it. 
Um, to evaluate these expressions involving E, you may certainly just use your calculator. That's uh, the idea here. So we have E raised to the fourth power, so it's just second E raised to the fourth, and then copying down that decimal to four, actually the directions say to three decimal places. So the answer here is 54 point five nine eight. This next question is just the same. We have e raised to the negative third power and we get the decimal zero point let's go with zero five zero. That would be accurate to three decimal places.